Well, hello again. This is Jared Brown, your host from Homemade Again. I do appreciate you tuning in and watching our videos. Today we've got something special we're going to do. I've been promising you I've been going to get outside, and I'm finally doing it. Uh, rain slacked off, I think, enough to where uh, we can get this done. What we're going to do today is we're going to uh, butcher a couple of chickens. These are some roosters that uh, my uncle had. Uh, I normally raise some meat chickens uh, a couple of times a year, uh, and I didn't, I haven't never filmed any of it. I've just always done it. Uh, I don't do this to, to look gross or to uh, hurt anybody's feelings or offend anyone, but here's the deal. Uh, this is where food comes from. And here at our home, uh, we do a lot of things homemade. And this is one of the things we do is process our own chickens. A lot of the time we do buy store-bought sometimes, uh, but as much fresh as we can. I may take you on and do a video. Uh, a lot of this I'll put whole in the freezer. These are young fryers or young roosters. Uh, they're gonna be disposed of anyway. Might not turn them into a meal. So we're glad you're here with us this morning. We're gonna dive right on into We're gonna begin by filling our water up with our pot. I already got it uh, filling up. Uh, don't fill it plumb full. You know, fill it for enough room when you submerge the chicken. And I think that's about enough for me here. Uh, Oh, uh, you know, where it don't overflow because it'll put out your fire. So be careful with that. Don't quite, um, don't fi quite fill it up too much. All right, while our water is finished heating up, it's nearly there. I'm going to go ahead and show you. A lot of people like to dispose of their chickens in different ways. Uh, I believe in using the, the easiest, most humane way. Uh, I'm not going to show that part. I'm just going to describe it. I have a board over here to my left. Uh, I use a hatchet or a machete. I dispatch the head, uh, then hold it so it doesn't break any limbs. Uh, a lot of people use a killing cone. I don't have one. I have used them and cut their throat. Um, and, and that works, and it works great. Uh, that's a good way of doing it. If you have that, it lets all the blood drain up. I just hold mine uh, till they get ready, then I begin the next part of the process, which is putting them in the water. So let's go ahead and dispose of this one and we'll be letting it uh, get ready and drained out. All right, now we're gonna go ahead uh, and I think our water's pretty close to being ready. It may not be quite warm enough, but that's okay. It means we'll just leave it in there a little bit longer. We're gonna go ahead and show you the process. And we'll just take his chicken and We'll swirl it around. I like to make sure all the feathers, and what you do is you keep a check. Them feathers ain't ready yet. Pull it out. Swirl it around. Don't leave it in too long at a time. Feathers haven't released yet. They will release and pull gently. When they do, that's when you quit this part of the process. We're starting to get some pull there, but uh, what, what the real main feathers... Just keep dipping it. I knew my water was still a little cold, but I want to go ahead and get this video uh, filmed. I've got, uh, at least today, normally I would do a lot of chickens, uh, uh, the most I've ever done at one time by myself, hand plucking. Uh, that's what we're going to do today is pluck these by hand. Has been, not quite yet, uh, 50 at one time. Now, I had a little bit of help. I uh, had a couple of friends that stopped by, and thank God they did because uh, they were able to help me. Uh, Drake ain't liking, he must have got out today. Uh, that's him barking. Uh, he didn't know I was out here. So when he got let out of the house, he'll be around here in a minute. Check on us. Uh, we're almost there. Uh, see that? Almost there. I'm gonna dip it a couple more times. A few more seconds. Let's try this side. Nope. Nope. I may, if you go too far, then they won't pull it off. That one's ready. All right, so now what we're gonna do, we're gonna begin the process. We're gonna go right over here. I'm using the tailgate of my truck. Uh, <laughs> Drake, maybe he'll settle down here in a minute. Use tailgate of my truck. We're gonna show you how to hand pluck these. Now I have used a hand plucker, I mean, uh, a uh, what they call a clucking plucker or chicken plucker or something like that. Uh, worked great. Um, I went and helped a friend, he had one. 
uh, man, I mean, you just throw them in there and get it done. I don't have the money for one. We just need food. Uh, food. I only have four today to do. Uh, so it's not going to take that long. You just begin pulling feathers. How hard is that, folks? Takes a little bit of time. Somebody said, can you skin them? Sure you can if you're not going to keep the uh, skin for anything. You're missing a lot if you don't. Uh, a lot of people, for health reasons, you know, won't eat chicken with skin. That's fine. Uh, but you got to remember them leg quarters and wings and all that that you could get off this. And, and if you keep it whole, if you're going to cook it whole, uh, you know, you want to keep that skin on as much as you can. Uh, this is not a per se meat chicken. This is a rooster. Uh, for meat chickens, I would use my broiler crosses. Uh, but this, you know, when you order chickens or when you buy chickens and you get mostly hens and then you wind up with several roosters, uh, you know, you're going to have that. When you do that, what you do is uh, start calling your chickens and you have to do that. I've got a bucket right here. I guess I could put these feathers in this bucket, save a little bit of mess in the yard. Time or two of mowing grass, that'll be over. See how this is starting to come right on out. Just reach in there and get all those out. And we'll show you what it looks like when we get right back. All right, taking it like this here, we got to remove these legs. But first, I want to go ahead and get this bin off, as you can see right here. Uh, so I'm just going to make a cut on both sides. Use a sharp knife, folks. If you don't, you're going to double work yourself. Now, I purposely don't feed these for 24 hours. Uh, sometimes that helps a whole lot about their crop being full. Uh, just going to take that off. I'm going to open it up. And get just a little bit where we can get our hand in there. And we're going to start. Got our gut bucket handy here. Just going to start easily reaching around, pulling the innards out. There are a few things a lot of people like to say. Uh, you're talking about catfish bait, boys. These hearts, livers, and gizzards. Also, all three that I just mentioned, you can eat as well. Go pull them out show you each part of the process the only thing there's a liver the only thing that tends to be hard is the uh it's hard to get sometimes the uh the lungs uh but uh they make special <coughs> yeah you hear that it's talking to us see if i can get it do it again they make a special tool for that i wonder i reached up in there there's the heart now, I'll, be, I'll just be saving it for bait. Here's the livers. Uh, get this off here. Don't need that. If, especially if you're going to eat it. But this is all eatable. That's, you know, you go buy store, buy chicken livers. You also fish it with them. There's heart. That makes a good piece to put on a hook as well or eat. Nothing wrong with eating those if you like them. I love them. Okay. Great cat inside to get them long. That's about all you can do to get those. Get it all out real good. Keep my water hose handy here. Keep it sprayed. Spray up in there real good. We're gonna set our meat right here. Actually, I'll go ahead, even though this is gonna be fish bait, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, I'll just set it right here. And I'll have me a pile of that. Uh, hey, who knows, maybe we can go fishing in the next couple of days. And that one is gutted. Uh, I wanted to show you the gizzard. I accidentally put it in here. Uh, when you get the gizzard out, you open it up, there's a little membrane. And 
You just pull that off. And that is a chicken uh, gizzard if you wanted to keep it and eat it. We'll put it for bait. A lot of people like to eat gizzards. Myself, uh, I, I used to like them, but uh, due to some health issues, uh, they don't want me eating any organ meat. I always keep your place clean right here, keep it sprayed off. The reason I'm using these garbage bags on the tailgate here, making a little barrier. Whatever you have, if you got a good table, put a good tablecloth on it. Hey, same thing, whatever. Probably gonna throw it away when you get finished. Uh, rinse them out real good. You got them cooling off now. Uh, we're gonna take these legs off. Uh, we just find this joint right here. Don't cut the bone because you will really do a number on your knife. Just pop that joint. Get in between it there. And then you just take the leg off. And just take this other leg off. Just put you a little cut around that. See there? And just right there. Cut the back side. Just like that. Uh, we're going to pull any more little feathers off. And there's one more thing I'm going to do. I'm just going to use a torch. And you're not trying to cook the chicken. You're simply uh, singeing it just a little bit, not coloring it in any way. You just, those little bitty pin hairs. Uh, oop, there you go. Just want to take those little bitty pin hair and it will get rid of them. And that's the way you do it. We're going to take this. It didn't heat it up none, but what we're going to do, uh, we will probably. Uh, due to these size, these are just young fryers. Uh, probably cut these up and portion them out here in a little bit. But I'm just going to stick it in my cooler here. Got some ice. And do go up, carry on, do the rest. That's basically how you butcher a chicken. That's about they are, all they are to it. You just uh, you uh, dispose of it, whatever manner you find uh, the handiest and easiest and best for you. I like doing it the most humane way. I don't like to see anything suffer. Uh, but this is what it takes for food to be produced for us. Uh, and uh, the good Lord uh, put these things on this planet for us, and uh, we appreciate it very much that he did that. So we uh, dispose of it, then we take it and we dip it in the water, uh, get the feathers pulling out, pluck it. If you've got one of those fancy machines, use one of them by all means. I actually encourage you to if you have that. Uh, but if you don't, it can still be done. Then you take the guts out, clean it, singe it, and then put it in the cooler all night, let it cool down for, you know, a couple of hours, and take it out, and you can cut it up, you can put it in bags and freeze it. Uh, I put a lot in jars, we'll try to do a video. If you'd like to see a video on that, uh, comment or ask us. And, uh, we'll see what we can do about making your video, how we do that as well. Uh, but that's gonna about wrap us up for today. We do appreciate you tuning in. Hope you'll join us again for the next uh, episode here with uh, Homemade. Never can tell what we're gonna do next. Don't never know what we're gonna do next. Uh, had a friend at work ask me to do this one, so uh, glad to do that for him and share it with all of you. May God bless you.